my pleasure to welcome today Valerie Carrasco. Valerie is uh, heading the demon driven transformation of Mitla Toledo, and he will share the uh, Mitla Toledo demon driven journey uh, right now. Valerie, are you with us? Yeah, thank you, Bernard. Thank you. Thank you. The stage is yours. Okay. okay. Hello, everybody, and thank you, the Mandriven Technology, to invite me to this session. I will try to share my experience doing Medler Toledo. It has been a fascinating project during more than two years and has been a very grateful experience with good results at the end. A little bit of myself. So I've been working in Medler Toledo during the last 12 years in several IT positions at the beginning, moving more to the business, to global supply chain at the end. Previously, I have a lot of experience in SAP, so I've been working as a SAP manager before. I have two children. I'm originally from Barcelona, also I worked in Switzerland. You will notice quickly with my accents. I stay here between other things because I like Swiss mountains a lot. I like cycling and quite also I used to like a lot basketball. I'm still supporting Barcelona. A small introduction about Medler Toledo. Medler Toledo is a company half Swiss, half American. Originally, it was a company that was doing scales and balances. Medler is, was a Swiss engineer. And Toledo was a very old uh, scale company based on Ohio. This company has evolved, and besides scales and uh, balances. We do the bas devices to measure things. We cover the whole portfolio of the supply chains and we do product like density meters, like pH meters. We do spectrometers to measure the quantity of light that goes through our liquids. We do floor scales. Uh, we do metal detectors or X-ray detectors for the basically for the food industry. So basically we do devices to measure things. If you want to have more information about my company, go to empty.com and you will find a clear explanation of all the products that we produce. First of all, I will explain the SEM strategy. So we are a B2B company and we use a hub-based fulfillment mode. So we have three main hubs, one in Asia Pacific, in Shanghai, another one in Europe, in the Netherlands, and another one in Ohio, in America. And from there, we serve more than 95% of our products. All the production organizations that are in each of the region deliver to the hubs, and from the hubs, we deliver to our customers. This is the same picture, very simple. We cannot have easier supply chain model. So if we receive a sales order from Spain, we deliver it from uh, the hub in the Netherlands. And this product has, can be produced in Europe, can be, be produced in the US, or has been produced in China. And then all the goods go through the hubs. With this, we simplify a lot the uh, our supply chains before or several years ago. Each of the production organization was shipping directly to the different customers. We simplify also the warehousing cost. We simplify also the uh, drop shipments to the customers. And also it's easier to implement demand-driven RP in a model like this. So our supply chain model is very simple. Our product portfolio is not very simple. So we have 1 million materials uh, in our ERP system, which is SAP. Half a million of them are active. And we have all type of planning strategies from make to stock buffer, to make to stock non-buffer, make to order, variable configurable, 
engineering to order any type of planning strategy. Um, I would like first to show you the vision that we have four years ago. So four years ago, we realized that our on-time delivery was flat. We were improving during several years, but the last years before 2018, this was quite flat. Our stocks were growing up. It's a company that has been growing during the last 15 years, and the ITO was going down. Our forecast accuracy was going down. We have been trying with several projects to improve the forecast accuracy. And the goal of the projects was not achieved at all. So sometimes we had projects to improve the forecast accuracy by 20%. And the final result was that the forecast accuracy was down 20%. And the bullwhip effect was huge. So we, when we were checking the forecast accuracy, it was much better in the hubs than in the production POs. And also we have two types of POs. We have finished product POs and we have component POs. The worst uh, forecast accuracy was in the component POs. Then we sit down and we decide, well, we need to do something to improve our planning situation. And then we decide to take two strategic initiatives. The first one is that we want to simplify planning. We have, we have had implemented uh, SAP during almost 10 years and several units were doing things differently and say, well, we need to simplify plan. One of the initial ideas that you can see in the future is that we wanted to go to advanced planning systems to improve our MRP results. We thought that we should improve our forecast accuracy. We should treat better our, all of the exception messages created after the MRP run. And we wanted to implement an advanced planning system. We want to continue with CAN, Kanban. Uh, we want to go more for pool. The second area is that also was a strategy for 2018. We want to go for more master data automation. Some of the things that um, we have achieved, for instance, is that all the lead times that we provide to our customers are automatically calculated. And we are working in several initiatives to also go in this direction. So the first thing that we did to check how we can improve our planning strategy is to check internally how we were ordering in a make-to-stock buffer environment. So we were checking the three different systems that we were using. First, we were using reorder point. Very simple. When the stock goes below the reorder point, we order again. It was very useful, but only for inexpensive or low volume materials. Then for 60% of our materials, we were using MRP. So you all know the how MRP runs. So we put a forecast and based on this forecast, magically MRP creates orders for all the components in the required quantity and dates. The main challenge that we had is that if we want to run MRP correctly, we need a correct forecast. And also all the deviations that we have against this forecast was creating big problems in afterwards in, in our supply chain. And for 10% of the materials, we were using lead principles. So it can be Kanban or Hedjunka boards. The concept is also known and simple. So when we have an empty box or cart, we create a new order. The main challenge that we have for this is that it's very valid only if we have a stable demand and short lead times. Then we were thinking, and it was, uh, this was our initial idea, to use some advanced planning systems to mitigate the, um, the consequences of having an incorrect uh, forecast and also to mitigate the bullwhip effect. But then we find another solution. So we find another solution, which was demand-driven MRP. So demand-driven MRP, as you know, is a new planning solution that creates decoupled points or dynamic buffers of stocks in several points of the supply chain to protect and promote the flow. And here is the big change. So we think that by promoting and protecting the flow, we will be able to improve our return on investment. 
And this is the first message to the top management. So we have been doing cost reduction programs. This was going well, but now we have new opportunities. In 2018 or 19, it was more difficult to sell. Now it's much easier to sell that if we improve our flows or material and information, we will have better, um, better net profit and better uh, return of investment. Then the second change, and this is more for the supply chain view, is that we are moving out from a forecast-based planning to demand-driven planning. So the first thing that we explain when we are explaining internally what is demand-driven RP is that we are moving out from forecast-based uh, forecast planning to demand-driven demand -driven planning. And we need to understand that forecast is not equal to demand. Forecast refers always to potential orders or estimation of orders. These potential orders at the end will be real orders or not. We don't know it. And we don't know in which percentage will be real. Demand refers always to real orders, always. So our planning will be based more on real orders than estimations or potential things. So how do we use the demand? We use the demand to define how big are the buffers. And also, as you know, the demand is also used in the net flow equation, and it uh, is used to trigger new orders. Do we use always demand? No, we don't use always demand. We have some cases that we use forecast, for instance, for new product introduction or discontinuation, we use forecast. When we have big projects uh, or big promotions, there are some products that are based on projects, and there we need to use the forecast because it's better than the demand, we suffer, well, we suffer. We're glad to have Q4 seasonality, and we have a lot of sales in during the last quarter. In this case, it's better to use forecast because and the sales, we, we need to size the buffer according to this forecast. And lately, we are also using uh, forecast when we have back orders. Why? Because when we have back orders, a lot of times, because we were not able to produce our product, the ADU goes down, and then it's better to use the forecast to, to size the buffers. So here are two big changes. At management level, we, we are going to um, use the flow. We are going to optimize the flow to improve our return of investment, our ROI. And in supply chain, we are not going to use forecast. We're going to use demand to trigger the new orders. So in 2019, when we began with this journey, we didn't know if demand-driven RP was a solution. So honestly, when we were asking, is demand-driven RP a good solution for Medler Toledo? The honest answer was, I don't know it. What we perceived quickly was that it was easy, and also it seems easy to try. So what we did at the beginning is yeah, we did some trainings, including the demand-driven um, planner training with Carlo, with Carlo Petak. We developed our own software. So our own software was Business Warehouse for HANA. So the idea is that we will develop our own software to, to run demand-driven RP. Nowadays, I will recommend to use uh, a demo version of Replenishment Plus because it's cheaper and it's easier to manage. The scope was three plants, all in Europe, around 900 materials and during six months. The results, and this is previous to COVID, were excellent. So our entire delivery improved by 5%. The sales order reconfirmation, so every time that we change a confirmation, it's, it's a change, was reduced by 50%. The most incredible thing, the missing parts in production was reduced by 75%, and our inventory was reduced by 50%. So after this, we can sell quickly to our top management that this was a good project and will have good results. Also, there was a push from the planners to implement it because it was simple, was visual, and, and they, they believe in the result of, of this pilot. Nevertheless, in 2021, the priorities changed. So our priority in 2021 was not to implement new projects, was to continue producing, to find 
other vendors because some of them were shut down. Also to put security measures for our workers in production. So this project was put on hold, but what we did instead is we run a second, uh, second pilot. This second pilot, the main difference is that, well, the software that we use was not our own software, was the Replacement Plus. We use, uh, we, we use the Replacement Plus software to do this. We, will, we built up some interfaces with robots. The scope was bigger, so we implemented it in six plans, and also we cover at the same time the three regions. The results were always also good, but the, the situation was, was different. So the on-time delivery was flat. The sales order confirmation, we cannot know it because there was a lot of other factors that conditioned this. The missing parts in production, even this, despite all the problems that we had in 2020, was reduced by 50% and the inventory was reduced by 5%. The results were much better than the materials that we managed with MRP. So now if we have to answer the same question, is the Mandarin MRP a good solution for Medler Toledo? The answer is clear, it's yes, it's a good solution. First of all, it's a solid methodology that is based on materials requirement planning, distribution requirement planning, lean, theory of constraints and Six Sigma. And we are moving out from forecast planning to demand planning. We had very good internal experiences with our pilots. We have checked all the experiences so we have checked other companies running with uh, running demand driven RP. We like it very much an MIT report that compares MRP with demand driven MRP and with advanced planning systems, put in a very good place uh, demand driven MRP. We did not check all the um, all the advices that we were doing several um, consultancy companies, including the demand driven tech because we want to, to test it in, internally and because we want to ha, ha, because we want to check how it was working in other companies. In terms of a strategy, it's perfectly aligned with the concept of simplified planning that we had in 2018. And also that we believe is that we want to do uh, in Merle Toledo supply chain, not only for planning, but for other things, a competitive advantage. Uh, respect other competitors, and we think that demand-driven MAP can help on this. Then, the implementation. The idea was to implement demand-driven MAP in Europe, in US, and China at the same time. So we want to implement demand-driven MAP for all type of materials by distributed, we call it Merle Intercompany, and make materials. We could not travel. And the scope was 20 plants, three of them were hubs, more than 400 units. And in total, when we finish the implementation, it will be 200 SKUs that we will put in the demand driven market. So how are we going to do this? When I present this, the same presentation or a similar presentation in Paris, I asked to uh, several professionals in, the, in supply chain, what do we need to implement correctly demand-driven RP or any other planning software? This was the answer. So the first one was to, yeah, to have good, good sponsorship from the management. The second one is to build up, it's not fully, uh, we cannot see the full sentence here is to build up a good implementation team, to set realistic goals and timelines, to put good trainings, to have a good blueprint and choose a correct software. More or less, this was uh, our idea when we begin to implement the Mandarin IP. We need to have uh, good sponsors and the way that uh, we achieve this is by having two pilots, all of them with better results than MRP, um, prove that uh, the results were better. And the second thing that we did is build up a good implementation team. So our initial idea was to centralize a lot of the uh, functions in supply chain that we can control better the processes. 
very soon we realized that if we want to implement globally demand-driven MRP in the three regions, we need that the, that the units take ownership of the new processes and demand-driven MRP. This was a good change. And now the units, they take decisions about which are the materials that they want to put in demand-driven MRP at the beginning. They take decisions about how we have to buffer them, which one yes, which one not. We give um, advices based on our blueprint, but they should feel that they participate in this in this project. So how we did it? For the global implementation, we use the John Cotter's eight-step model. John Cotter established three different areas that we have to work to do an implementation or a change. The first thing is we need to create a climate of change. The second is that we need to engage and enable the organization. And the third thing is that we need to be able to sustain the change. So for the first one, what we did is we established the urgency of demand-driven MRP implementation. Now it's easier to put this urgency because our forecast will be wrong. And if we change from forecast-based planning to demand-driven MRP planning, the results will be better. We did, we built up regional teams, one in Europe, one in US, one in China. We share objectives and we build trust. We share the vision which means global processes, yes, but unit ownership. We need that the unit feels that this is their project. We communicate the strategy in the three regions in the same way. We empower the users and the units uh, to, to run the demand-driven IP projects. And also we create short-term wins with the demand-driven IP pilot. We promote improvements and we put it in the templates and basically it's easier to sustain the change when the units they feel that this is their project so if we check other implementation of planning software we will see it something like this so we go from one unit to another unit and then we implement the our planning our planning processes we did it differently, so we wanted to implement it at the same time in Europe, in Asia, in America. For this, it's clear that we need to, to empower the units to run the demand development implementation. And thanks to the two pilots, this was possible in Merler Toledo. Something that we are doing is we are having a common blueprint. So this here is a, we have two main documents for our blueprint. The first one is called business planning for business planning parameters for demand development MRP. explains which are the planning parameters that we are going to use in demand development MRP. And if the parameters come from SAP or, or you have to put it manually in replacement plus depending on each of the business case. And the second document is the standard work for demand driven MP, which explains which are the daily activities or monthly activities that we have to run to run demand driven MP RP. We use these two documents to, to write our process. Very important also education and training. So the first implementation that <coughs> we did was not perfect but we have improved. Something that we do is um, well, we take, we take uh, initial, uh, initial trainings. We were very lucky to have Carol Petak as a professor. It was two amazing days with her. We um, do trainings, the Bandibana MAP trainings for all the project team and power users. We have local teams that we, they do trainings in the local languages, for instance, all the trainings in China are done in Chinese. The trainings are short, now are short, so maximum 30 minutes. They are online, a lot of them. And then we, we, we try to do it short uh, because we realize that if we have two hours training, most of the users, they don't listen anymore. And very important, so we have spent a lot of data, in a lot of time in simulations. So 
each time that we try to implement demand-driven IP in a new unit is around four months. Two months, we dedicate it only for simulations. So in the first two months, we do the training and, and some master data cleansing. They have two months to do simulations and with real data. So we put real data from SAP to the Replacement Plus quality system, and they do simulations during two months. Very important because they feel after two months, the user should be confident with the result of demand-driven MRP, and they, are, they can fine-tune um, demand-driven MRP. A good advantage of demand-driven MRP is the simplicity, which was in our strategy in 2019, and the visibility. So we work based on exceptions. So here we have the, our planning priorities. So we order what we need to order, and we act also. We review only what is critical or high, so something that is strange. The same for the execution alerts. So we act uh, by exception. We are going to check only those cases that um, we think that is critical. Something that is we like it very much, and it's a difference between Replenishment Plus and other softwares, is the, visi the visibility. Quickly, we can see the planning evolution and planning performance of an individual material. So quickly, we can see if the buffer goes down and, and goes up. We can see the planning situation and the stock situation. We can have also very good global visibility. Here on the top right, we have the evolution of the buffers from planning point of view. So green means that uh, the planning situation is correct and blue is over planning. We should not have anything in yellow or red at the end of the day. And also we can see the execution of the stock situation. So stock, the green one is that we have the correct stock. This is the goal of, of the buffers to have the correct stock. Oh, we have too much stock, or we have a little bit of too little stock. We have a very good visibility of which are the materials that we have correct stock, too little stock, or very too little stock, and overstock. Also, we can analyze. So the, in, in the manual RP, we check the current status of the buffers. We check the future status of the buffers, if we are going to have a stock out or not. But also, we can analyze the past performance and check if the buffer have had stockouts and the reason of the stockout. So this exam, this uh, report that we use, here we see all the materials that we have more stockouts and we have classified the four types of stockouts. Basically, it could be because we had a high demand in the last three months, we had some big spikes that has created a stockout or because the material was not ordered on time or because the vendor or production lead time is longer than we planned. So here we can see a lot of these cases because um, well, this case was the vendor was not able to deliver on time. Very important after two months of simulations, most of the planners that use the Mandarin RP, they don't come back to, or they cannot come back to MRP. The visibility that we have, the information that we have about planning situation, is much better than MRP, and I've been working with MRP more than 20 years. Then, next steps. I will finish with these slides. Yes, we want to continue with the demand driven MRP, and then we are working in three different areas. In the next years, it will not be one year, it will be several years. We want to implement the demand driven adaptive enterprise. We want to define the planning processes and the management processes for the tactical and strategic range. So we believe that this is a project that will involve, will involve the top management because we want to have a business plan that is based on flow and the opportunities of the flow. The second thing that we want to do is we want to put the demand-driven MRP information that we have today in the replacement plus in the shop floor. We want that the shop floor produces not only by 
the, that the priorities in production, they are not only by dates, but also by demand-driven MRP alerts and risks. And the third thing that we want to do is we want to go further in automation and integration. For instance, we want to calculate automatically the times, or we want to send the information of advanced shipping notifications from vendors directly in Replendent Plus, because when we have an ASN from a vendor, the, the planner, they don't need to check this material because they know that something is coming. Okay, and that's all from my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, so we we did not receive questions yet for you, uh, Valerie, but please, to all attendees, do not hesitate to uh, to ask uh, questions. Uh, right away as uh, this is quite an impressive project uh, we've been uh, blessed to to support the team uh, and what what i should say as well is that this project has uh, has been led by a very small team i think we can we can say that uh, very yeah. yeah sure with, uh, with a good uh, good orchestration uh, throughout the uh, throughout the co the corporation. Maybe as we are waiting for okay, so we have the first question, which is how much resistance did you face with implementation? Okay, very very good question. Yes, we have resistance, and we have resistance because we are moving out from forecast-based planning to demand-driven planning. And all of us, we have been working for a lot of years based on forecasts. We knew in advance that we had, we had this resistance. The way to convince the people that demand is better than forecast, there are two ways to do it. The first one is to show the results of the pilot. This was helping a lot um, this was helping a lot um, with the results. The second one is that a lot of planners, they were quite tired of do not having the correct forecast. And there was a culture of blaming one when was blaming about the planning results because we didn't have good forecast. We solved all of this by moving from forecast to demand driven planning. We are allowed to compare results of MRP and demand driven MRP. We are not forbidding this. Um, but at the end, what the planners see is that the, the results are better and they understand better why we are ordering a material or not. So yes, we had some resistance and it's different from unit to unit, um, but we were able to convince them by first explaining the goal of demand driven MRP, explaining the results, and also the user experience in the during these two months of simulations. But very good question. A second question uh, for you, Valerie. Um, I understand that uh, for a period you were using both MRP and DMRP. Asking Boyan, did you compare the results and how big the difference was? Yes, we were comparing the results between MRP and demand driven MRP in the pilot we were able to compare the demand-driven, the first pilot in 2019, we were able to compare the demand-driven MRP results with the past results for the same materials, and it was better, much better. In During the COVID times, we were able to compare materials managed with MRP and demand-driven MRP, because it was not, make, it was not making sense to compare demand-driven MRP materials with the past, because the past a lot of time was better. And the result was much better with uh, MRP. The result that I presented in the, in the two pilots, so improve of 5% uh, on-time delivery, 15% in stock reduction, and 75% in stock outs. This is where we can see quickly the, the biggest difference. And yes, we, we were comparing MRP and demand driven MRP results.
Do we go uh, to another question? Yeah, another question which is uh, related to interfaces. So did you uh, develop interfaces between uh, recognition person and CP? Uh, mm -hmm. And yes, and if yes, for what type of data? Yes. So we were developing um, the so internally the, the owner of the interface interfaces is Metler Toledo. We use standard APIs provided by Replenishment Plus. And the interfaces that we are using is the part interface, which is the material master interface. So we interface the material master with all the planning data. We interface the consumptions of the of the past year. We interface the forecast, which is the result of our MDO4, because we're running parallel still MRP. So our forecast is the result of the MDO4. And also we interface all the planning situation from MDO4. Here we, we have um, all the stocks, all the supply orders, and all the demand. In, in demand driven MRP, we have to use work only with real supply orders and real demand. So if you work in SAP, we are not interfacing plan orders or purchase requisitions. Also, we interface in bill of materials, work centers, and routines. Are you using any solution for product production capacity scheduling? There is a standard solution from Replenishment Plus. It's called the uh, DBR scheduling. Uh, we are not using this. So by the moment we are still using, we have an add-on on SAP it's from a small company called uh, GIB. So by the moment we have, a, we have the, this add-on from SAP to run the production scheduling. In future, we'll think about integrate better and the, the production scheduling, but by the moment not. How often are you looking at your buffers to determine if they need to be changed? Okay. The recommendation, uh, the, the recommendation also when we listen to Carlo Petak is to uh, check the planning results once a day. Uh, in some cases, it makes sense to do it twice a day. So we have, uh, in some cases, we have uh, to, uh, we upload two times per day the all the interfaces with the with the planning data. So between in some units we have it once a day, in some other units we have it twice a day. In general, I will recommend depending on your business, but it can be once a day or twice a day. So it's not a a life environment, but quite up to date. Um, but uh, just to compare, because I think the question from David was more about you know how often would you run this not the profile? Ah, how often? Why? So, okay, okay. So I run this, we run the smart buffer profile every quarter, every three months. It's a strategic decision that we cannot run every day unless we put new materials in replacement plus and we run it more often. But the general advice is to run it every quarter, every three months. Uh, so MTP has a lot of a range of product lines. Have you compared results for on-time delivery and inventory reduction across those product lines? Mm -hmm. Yes, lines. We, we have compared them. Um, we have better results. Well, first of all, we have compared them between different products and also we have compared between buy, make and distribution. So we have more benefits for buy, for buy materials and distribution materials than make. And also we have more benefits for components that uh, goes more in, it's surprising, but it's like this, more in make to order materials and with long lead times. This is the type of products that uh, we have more benefits, especially also inventory reduction. So I will say, between buy, make, and distribution will be buy and distribution, and also for materials with longer lead times. So like, um, like um, make to order or engineering to order. Uh, 
Can you share more details on how did you do the training for the DMRP implementation? Was it only DMRP related or also methodology related with implementation? Yes, I can share it. So our training is divided in four blocks. The first one is uh, pure demand-driven MRP explanation. So we are explaining the demand-driven MRP methodology. The second one is a, a, is a training to use replenishment plus. We are using the standard trainings for replenishment plus for this. So we have some standard trainings for this and we are using their standard trainings. The third training is about the business planning parameters. So which are the master data that we have to use in each of the uh, business scenarios. And the fourth one is the standard words, which are the daily tasks and monthly tasks that we have to run to run the demand-driven MRP. And we do this, the last one, to begin afterwards with the, with the simulations. Is this answering? I hope this is answering your, your question. I think it is. Uh, well, th thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Valeria. I'm asked by Nico, uh, who is watching both the clock and uh, our marketing messages, to remind everybody that retention Plus is now into a flow. Uh, and, uh, and you didn't migrate yet to into a flow, but uh, uh, I'm just <laughs> emphasizing the message. Um, for our uh, our attendees uh, with a broader range of, uh, of features. Thank, thank you very much again, uh, Valerie. That's really an impressive um, project. Uh, and for all attendees, keep in mind that Valerie will be with us later on today for the most relating uh, panel discussion. So if you have any additional tricky question for him, uh, please get prepared. Uh, for this discussion later on today.